Need help planning your trip to Nassau, Bahamas? Well, look no further. Hi, Gwen here. Thanks for joining this video on essential things to know before you go to Nassau. I'm sure they'll definitely help in making your trip a lot more enjoyable, no matter how you arrive. So let's go ahead and dive in. Why visit Nassau, Bahamas? Located on New Providence Island, Nassau is the capital of the Bahamas, a country comprising of 700 islands with a territory greater than 100,000 square miles across the Caribbean Sea. Since its founding in 1670 by the British, the port city of Nassau has been burnt down, rebuilt, renamed, and colonized, and has been the center of wars, pirates, slavery, international trade, and tourism. The most visited of Bahamian destinations, New Providence and its accompanying Paradise Island act as jumping off points to other idyllic Bahamian destinations, dubbing them the gateway to the Bahamas. But Nassau offers more than just being a gateway or blessed with world-class resorts, award-winning soft sandy beaches, and colorful marine life blessing its waters. Recognized as part of the UNESCO Creative Cities Network for its crafts and folk art, Nassau also offers an abundance of friendly people, culture, history, cuisine, festivals, shopping, and nightlife, making Nassau the ideal location to get the best in tropical paradise, relaxation, and diversity of exciting activities, all in one vacation destination. Number two, the best time to visit Nassau depends on the time of year, holidays, and events, because these affect the number of tourists and travel costs. Nassau's average temperatures range from the mid-60s to 90s Fahrenheit year-round, and NASA's water temperatures average from the mid-70s to mid-80s Fahrenheit, perfect for year-round water activities. Peak season months are December through April, being the coolest and driest months with the shortest days, but also with the highest amount of tourists, causing the lowest accommodation availability, and many hotels and resorts booking well in advance, driving up accommodation, transportation, meal, and excursion prices, especially around the holidays, festivals, and spring break. Low season months are August through October, which even though they have long days, they are also the hottest and most humid and rainiest months with more mosquitoes and chances for hurricanes, making it harder to enjoy the outdoor activities. This is when there are fewer tourists, however, offering more accommodation availability, better hotel discounts, and lower overall travel costs. Shoulder season months are May through July and November which may offer a chance to enjoy NASA outdoors and activities while capturing some of the good travel deals. Even though it rains these months, NASA can still hold nice weather while not being as hot and humid as the low season months. There are also fewer tourists, more accommodation availability, and lower travel costs than peak season and decent daylight hours. Keep in mind New Providence and Paradise Island are within the hurricane belt, which can be a factor for the low and shoulder season months of June through November. So buying travel insurance should be considered. Always check Nassau's holiday and year-round festival schedules well in advance when planning your Nassau itinerary, like planning around the junk new festivals in December and January and July, or the Bahamas Carnival in May, just to name a few. Overall, Nassau is a pricey destination, so if you're on a budget, stay tuned for my amazing Nassau budget tips later in this video. Number three, getting to Nassau. Visitors reach Nassau by air or sea, whether by commercial or private plane, or by ferry, private charter, or cruise line. Flights arrive at Lyndon Pindling International Airport, the major airport for the Bahamas, located about 10 miles west of downtown Nassau, and has daily flights to and from the US, Canada, the UK, and the Caribbean. You will be expected to fill out a customs form upon entry, so have a pen handy for quicker exiting. When leaving Nassau, also ensure that you arrive at least two hours before your flight departs, as the customs line can back up very quickly. Besides a hotel shuttle, there are multiple transportation options from the Nassau airport, which I'll review in a moment. Nassau also receives many cruise ships and ferries daily. The Prince George Wharf, located in the heart of downtown Nassau, is the main port receiving all cruise ships, making it easy to walk to shops, dining, and local attractions, or catch a public bus, ferry, or taxi to further destinations. Consult your cruise lines for disembarkation schedule and how much time you'll have to plan your Nassau stop. High-speed ferries from other Bahamian islands like Eczema, Spanish Wells, and Harbor Island arrive in Potter's Cay, located just east of downtown. Likewise, you can walk or catch the bus or hail a taxi on East Bay Street to your Nassau destination. 
To get around NASA, let's start with getting from the airport to your accommodations. Like I mentioned, there are several transportation options from the airport. If you don't have a complimentary airport shuttle from your hotel, the quickest and easiest way from Nassau Airport is by taxi. Taxis are located at the taxi rank outside the baggage claim section of both terminals. You'll be directed to the first available taxi when you arrive. Taxi fares are based on two passengers with two bags each. Although taxi fares are posted on the airport website, always confirm the taxi fare first with the driver before leaving. Also confirm the payment method up front. Some taxis may take credit cards, but most only take cash. And it is customary to tip 15% to taxi drivers. If you're staying downtown, the trip will take 15 to 20 minutes, depending on time of day. And if you're going to Paradise Island, it will take longer and expect a bridge toll to be added to your fare. Private and group airport transfers are also quick and convenient and can be arranged online and prepaid in advance with a credit card. Some group and private transfers may cost considerably higher than a taxi, however, so choose your airport transfer wisely. I have some links for some well-priced transfers below in the video description for you. At the time of making this video, rideshares are still not available in Nassau nor Paradise Island. And you can rent a car, which could be costly though, and you'd be left dealing with parking and cost of gas on the island and driving on the left-hand side of the road, which if you're not familiar with, I would not recommend doing. The least expensive but longest and least convenient transportation from the airport is by the public bus called the Jitney. The fare is cheap, $1.50 one way, but buses only run during the day and are best if you have carry-on luggage only. Plus, you will need to walk 15 minutes from the airport to the John F. Kennedy roundabout to catch the number 12 bus, which may also incur waiting an additional 10 to 20 minutes for the bus. The bus covers much of the island from the airport, so time to destination will vary. If you're going to downtown, expect a 30 minute ride. Now at your NASA accommodation, let's cover getting around NASA. Again, you have several options if you don't have a rental car. The cheapest transportation to explore more of NASA is the Jitney. This recognizable blue and white bus has several routes, but the number 10 is the most popular, running from downtown Nassau to Cable Beach several times a day every day. You catch the Jitney at designated stops, or you can flag down the driver who may stop for you. Jitneys may also honk to offer a ride. Look for the number of the bus on the front and back. You can also ask the driver to stop anywhere along the way. The cost for one-way tickets are $1.50, and you pay as you exit with exact change. The Jitney runs every day, but with limited service on Sundays, and it runs from 9 a.m. to 6.30 p.m., so after 6.30, you'll have to rely on a hotel shuttle, taxi, or walking. Jitneys do not go over the Paradise Island Bridge, so you also need to take a taxi, water taxi, or walk over the bridge to Paradise Island. If you don't want to wait for the bus, taxis are the next popular way to cover more ground. Your hotel can help you arrange one if necessary. Just remember to have cash and confirm your destination fare before riding. Local ferries, or water taxis, provide inexpensive travel between Nassau and Paradise Island while providing great views of both. One-way tickets can be purchased for $5 in cash near the cruise terminal at Woods Rogers Wharf and at the Green Shack at the base of Sir Sydney Poitier Bridge on Paradise Island, and trips take approximately 15 minutes between islands. Water taxis leave every 30 minutes on the half hour and hour starting at 9 a.m., and the last taxi runs at 6 p.m. It's helpful to confirm the last taxi run time with the ticket office. Don't be afraid to leave a tip for the taxi driver if you received a nice narration on NASA. NASA has many areas that are walkable, including the esplanades between beaches, Paradise Island, and downtown. You can even walk across the bridge to Paradise Island if you want. Downtown NASA holds the most things to do for walking, from historical sites and museums to shopping and dining. Besides a few hills, the area is mostly flat. Downtown can be crowded with tourists when cruise ships disembark, but then there are quiet times as well. Like driving, walk on the left-hand side of the sidewalk. Most of downtown has sidewalks, but you'll find surrounding streets will not. Instead, there will be a thin dirt path. And as cars move quickly, just be aware and careful on these streets. Renting or taking a guided tour by bike, e-bike, or e-scooter is a possibility in Nassau, which are great ways to explore and learn more about Nassau. For great walking and biking tour ideas, see some of the links I have for you below in the video description to get you started. According to Numbio, Nassau's crime rate is considered high. But don't worry, because here's some good safety tips to practice for Nassau to get the most out of your trip. 
the sand trap area west of Arawak K and over the hill south of Nassau City Center are best to be avoided, and if visiting Queen's Staircase, go during the day. Traffic moves quickly in Nassau. Locals know how to drive on the left-hand side, but many tourists don't, and many locals don't automatically stop for pedestrians, and many streets don't have sidewalks, so therefore just be very careful when walking and crossing the streets. If you're not familiar with driving on the left-hand side of the road, keep to walking, taking the bus, or taxi. Keep alcohol consumption at a moderate level, especially if you expect to be diving or doing other water activities, and drink water to stay hydrated. And wear sunscreen any time of the year. Don't stay out past sunset or in unpopulated areas alone. Never leave belongings unattended, and bring only essentials with you to the beach, leaving your valuables in your hotel. Walk in well-lit and populated areas only and keep your belongings securely on you in crowded or touristy areas with no open bags or pockets and don't carry cash or valuables in your pockets. I practiced these general precautions on my trip to Nassau this year and honestly, I never felt unsafe as a solo female traveler on excursions, at the beach, walking during the day or night. If you normally feel uncomfortable being out at night alone, visit Nassau when the daylight hours are longest to enjoy more of Nassau. Make your Nassau travel as easy as possible and bring the following travel essentials with you. VPN service for data security, a portable Wi-Fi, or get a Bahama SIM card, a solar charger so your devices are always charged on the beach or during a long excursion or boating trip, reusable water bottle for filling up at the tap to reduce costs and waste, a hat for any time of year, sunglasses with UV protection, a monosling bag or small backpack to keep your valuables secure while you're exploring. A waterproof waist pouch for keeping your valuables safe on you while you're in the water and not left on the beach. A dry bag to keep your items dry on boating trips or on the beach. And a thermal phone case so your cell phone doesn't overheat in the sun. Number seven, where to stay. Taxes and fees abound on NASA accommodations, some controlled by the Bahamian government and some with extra city tax, property service charges, destination fees, and others, which are unescapable and add up quickly. If you wish to splurge for the resort stay, know that many resorts do tack on additional resort fees, so just be mindful when doing your booking. In addition to budget, where you stay in NASA is important for your itinerary, especially on a short visit or first-time visit. As a solo traveler, I look for accommodations that are centrally located, offering easy access to top things to do and multiple transportation methods to help my budget. For Nassau, I believe staying close to Nassau City Center is ideal because your walking distance to downtown and resort shops, bars, and restaurants, including rum and beer tasting opportunities, historic and cultural sites and museums, the water taxi to Paradise Island, meeting points for tours and excursions, and public beaches like Junkanoo and Saunders Beach with water sport rentals. Also, it's a shorter distance to the airport with no need for bridge tolls. I also look for accommodations with reasonable price, great amenities, free cancellation, breakfast inclusion, good ratings, and a travel sustainable rating. That said, a couple of the accommodations I would recommend while staying in Nassau that check all these boxes are Margaritaville Beach Resort and Courtyard by Marriott Junkanoo Beach. I stayed at Courtyard Marriott on my last visit to Nassau. Right across the street from Junkanoo Beach, I had a large, comfortable room with a wonderful view. The hotel had a very friendly and helpful staff a nice pool area, a bar with free drink tickets, they provided breakfast and a kiosk for shopping, and it had a travel sustainable rating by booking.com. Additionally, it was only two to 30 minutes by foot for most of everything I did in Nassau on my four day itinerary. So I would recommend staying at the Marriott as a budget friendly option in Nassau. Hostels can sometimes be even more budget friendly. Unfortunately, hostels are not very plentiful in Nassau. For proximity to downtown, however, you could try staying at De Pink and White Palace. And if you really want to stay on Paradise Island, for cost, proximity to downtown, and Cabbage Beach, a travel sustainable rating, and decent price, you may wish to try the adult-only and all-inclusive Warwick Paradise Island Bahamas and Rui Palace Paradise Island, or the Coral at Atlantis. Number 8. Top Things to Do when you think of Nassau Bahamas, you may think of laying on white sandy beaches with views of crystal clear water. And you'd be right. Nassau and Paradise Islands beaches are top draws for sunbathing, swimming, and multiple water sports. Some of the top beaches to visit are Cabbage, 
Paradise, Junkanoo, Saunders, Cable, Love, and Jaws Beach. And there are more. But believe it or not, NASA has more than just beaches. NASA offers things to do for all types of travelers and tastes. Here are but some of the other top things to see and do in NASA to help build your NASA itinerary. Even better, some of these are free. And there's much more. And NASA would not be complete without sampling the local cuisine and drinks. Whether baked, grilled, broiled, fried, in a stew, or salad, definitely try the local conch, fish, and crawfish dishes with the classic sides of rice, potato salad, coleslaw, or baked mac and cheese. For sweets, try the Johnny Cakes, fried plantains, and any variety of rum cake you wish, from the traditional cake with pecans to amaretto flavored and more. Again, these are just some of the dishes to try in Nassau. And don't pass up the local sands or Calic beer, microbrew beers, and different rums and traditional daiquiris and cocktails like a Sky Juice, Bahama Mama, Goombay Smash, and the Bahamian Switch Up. But be careful, these all pack quite a punch, pardon the pun but you can ask for drinks with no alcohol if you prefer. From beach and patio grills, local favorite restaurants, high profile restaurants and rooftop bars, NASA has it all. Go to Arawak Key for a traditional fish fry. The Hillside House has a great outdoor patio and barbecue setting with awesome artwork. Or combine shopping with casual dining at Heritage Village. Near Heritage Village is the renowned Grey Cliff Hotel and Restaurant for fine dining or just stopping in for a signature cocktail. Downtown try the Bahamian Bistro, the Green Parrot, or the Bahamian Cookin, a popular spot with the locals. For a relaxed and fun beach setting, hit the Tiki Bikini Hut on Junkanoo Beach along with the other outdoor Junkanoo Beach Huts. Sample some rum cake at the Rum Cake Factory or pick up a Tortuga Bahamian Rum Cake at a gift shop on Bay Street. They're all delicious. Speaking of shopping, Bay Street downtown has shops galore and the straw market for any shopper. Minutes from downtown, explore the Heritage Village as well. And do you like cigars? Well, watch them being made by hand at the Grey Cliff before you buy. Resorts are also good for boutique shopping. And of course you want to sample the local rum, wine, and beer, right? Well, John Watling's Distillery is your stop for trying your hand at rum bottling, doing a rum tasting, or just hanging out on the patio with a daiquiri. For wine, go to Bahama Barrels, and chocolate or coffee-flavored stouts or pumpkin IPA microbrews are a must-try at the Riptide Brewery. For late-night cocktails and a view, go to the Sky Bar Lounge on top of Margaritaville, or try the Bahamar and Atlantis Resorts for drinks, music, or trying your luck at the tables. Providing a 15% gratuity is customary when dining in Nassau, and it may already be added to your restaurant or hotel bill, so check first. You can add more for exceptional service, and you may also be expected to tip more in casinos and high-end restaurants. Nassau is ideal for participating in half and full day excursions and tours to enjoy more beaches, marine life, and culture. A popular full day trip is to Eczema Island for swimming with the pigs. Also popular, especially if you're on a short stay or want to do as much as possible, are any of these following half day or less activities and tours. And that's not all. These two to 10 hour activities and excursions are great group trips for fun, learning and meeting other travelers. Look in the video description for links I have for you below for my suggested activity and tours that I think you'll like. As promised, budget tips. What you hear about NASA is true. It is expensive. It's an island and they have to ship everything in. And this impacts all travel costs. However, there are some ways to shave off those NASA travel costs with the following budget tips. 
Visit in the shoulder season months to capture cooler weather and easier walking and outdoor enjoyment and avoiding the hot and humid mosquito summer months. Traveling during the week and avoiding holidays and popular festivals can also save on travel funds. A good deal on a hotel near downtown could cost approximately two to $300 a night, but you need to book well in advance. And save on all-inclusive costs and pricey resort taxes with a budget-friendly hotel. Non-beachfront accommodations and those further away from downtown could provide lower costs. Just stay close to a jitney stop or within walking distance to a public beach. The Comfort Inn and Suites on Paradise Island gives free access to Atlantis Aquaventure without the Atlantis resort prices. And gas prices by walking as much as possible or taking the local taxi, jitney, or water taxi. No matter where you go, always confirm the fare of your destination with the taxi driver before leaving. Opt for the public bus to and from the airport. Instead of a taxi, use the Nassau Paradise Island water taxi. Depending on when you go and where you stay, there is much to see and do on foot, which can save a ton of money on transportation. And from the water taxi to Cabbage Beach is only a 25 minute walk, making Paradise Island doable without a taxi. Bring your U.S. or Bahamian cash with you to avoid the pricey ATM and bank fees. Book an accommodation close to a market and with a refrigerator to store food in your room. And use the local kiosks to load up on drinks and snacks for the beach. Avoid the lounge bed rentals on the beach and just get there early for a good spot and use your towel. Buy a Bahamas SIM card or use Wi-Fi for free calling. Try entering the Atlantis Aquarium after 5 p.m. for free entry to avoid that hefty Atlantis Day Pass fee. And last, Nassau does have public beaches, historical, cultural sites, and some museums that are all free and fun things to do in Nassau. Travel the Bahamas with your eco-friendly foot forward and the planet in mind using any of these easy travel tips that do make a difference. Look for flights that emit less CO2 through your airline or through Skyscanner's Greener Flights filter and purchase carbon offsets through your airline or third party to lower your flight's carbon footprint. The less you pack, the lighter the plane and the less fuel it uses, so travel carry-on only, which also saves time in the airport. Ditch using taxis or the rental car and use the Nassau Jitney or walk or rent a bike or e-scooter instead. In addition to Booking.com's travel sustainable properties, Green Globe and Green Key Global also have eco-friendly certified lodgings. Unfortunately, reef safe sunscreen is not prevalent in Nassau, so bring yours with you to protect the marine life. On the plane, dining, shopping, on the beach, or on a food tour, help keep Nassau and its waters clean by bringing your own reusable collapsible cup, water bottle, water bottle carrier, bamboo travel utensils, and travel bag. These take up very little space in your carry-on. And the water is safe to drink in NASA, so fill up at the tap and reduce plastic trash and save money on bottled water. I hope you're still listening because here are some very valuable travel tips just for NASA. Expect to be using a lot of cash, especially using taxis and tipping. If you're from the U.S., don't bother doing a currency exchange. U.S. currency is accepted everywhere and the conversion rate is basically one to one. And if you get Bahamian cash back in a transaction, just use it or trade it for U.S. cash in another transaction before leaving the Bahamas. If you're not from the U.S., exchange your currency before arriving to avoid those expensive ATM and bank fees. Get your excursion tickets, like for diving, boating trips, or walking tours, in advance during peak season. If your electronics are from the U.S., Canada, or Mexico, there's no need to bring travel adapters or converters. Free Wi-Fi is offered in the Nassau Airport, Festival Place Welcome Center, hotels, resorts, and some dining and shopping establishments. Just ask them. English is spoken in the Bahamas, and Bahamians are very friendly and helpful. So don't be afraid to stop and ask for tips. And don't be surprised if you're stopped and asked about your stay in Nassau. I was stopped three times. Again, the water is safe to drink in Nassau. Nassau can get very hot and humid during the shoulder and low season months, so drink a lot of water and avoid overconsumption of alcohol. And speaking of alcohol, Nassa does allow open containers on the beach, but when walking around town, you should put your alcoholic drink in a cup. 
The peak season months can be deceptively cool at times, so don't fail to use your sunscreen every day. The downtown's full of concrete, so wear comfortable walking shoes and wear them to the beach. And not all beaches have public access, so get a map of these beaches from your hotel or cruise ship. Don't be surprised or offended when taxis pull up next to you while you're walking and asking you if you need a ride. It will happen, but it can also even be a pleasant surprise when you need one. And if you find a really good taxi driver with a good rate, ask him or her for their card and use him or her throughout the rest of your trip. The amount of time you spend in NASA depends on your preferences, interests, and activities you wish to undertake. NASA's mix of historical sites, beaches, cultural and dining experiences, marine life and water sport activities could easily hold you for an active but relaxing week. If you don't have a week, however, I recommend spending a minimum of four days to be able to engage in at least one of each of these top things to do in NASA. Now that you know your way around NASA, would you like a great NASA itinerary to show you how to get the best of NASA and Paradise Island in just four days? Well, check out the link I have for you below in the video description for downloading my awesome four-day itinerary from my last solo trip to NASA that takes out all of the guesswork for your first time trip. And stay tuned for upcoming videos to see how much fun I had in those four days. Oh, and if you only have a day stop in NASA by cruise ship, don't worry because I also have a downloadable best of NASA in one day itinerary I think you'll enjoy. The link is also below. Well, thanks so much for watching my video on the essential things to know about Nassau Bahamas before you go. And if you like this video, give it a like. Also subscribe and click the bell to stay notified so you know when the next great travel guides are coming out by Core Travel. And there are more coming out. If you want more travel information on Nassau and the Bahamas, as well as excursion, day trip ideas, and the suggested itinerary, check out all the links I have for you below in the video description. And that's it. Have a fabulous time in Nassau.